How are you, my friends? This is another lecture of the algebra course lectures series. This is lecture 31 about transformations of functions. Now, transformations of functions, we will have two lectures, 31 and 32, are related together. So the objectives here, we have a shifting. This is idea number one. And we have a reflecting graphs, idea number two. Both will be in lecture 31. Now the second lecture, the after that lecture will be vertical stretching and shrinking, even and odd functions. Idea number three, idea number four will be in lecture 32. So the vertical shifting, when we have a graph, sometimes we need to shift the graph vertical, which means up or down. So if we have f of x plus c, then we shift the graph c units upward. If we have f of x minus c, we shift the graph downward c units. You can see here the graph. This is the original one, the blue. This is shifted up. And this is the blue here, the original one. This is shifted down. Here we have some examples, easy, nice examples. <clears throat> f of x is equal absolute value of x plus two. Absolute value we know from the basic functions. It's a V-shape plus two. C plus two is outside, so it will be shifted up. Or we can bring the two on the other side and we know always f of x is y. So if you see also y minus two is equal absolute value of x, that means this is two units up. See y minus two, two units up. You can take two on the other side, it becomes plus two. Just be careful. Same thing here, we have a parabola, f of x is equal x squared plus three. So this is shifted up three units. Now shifting down, we have the function f of x is equal x cubed minus four. See the minus four, this is minus c. Shifted down four units. Also we can take the minus four on the other side related to y, y plus four. So if you see y plus four, see y added the number, this number is shifted down because you can take it on the other side, it becomes minus four. Same thing for square root of x minus five. We have the square root of x function, that's square root function, minus five outside, see the minus five is outside, shifted down. Now you can find x intercept, you can find y intercept, you can find the domain, the range, etc. Horizontal shifting, when we shift the graph to the right or to the left, that means the value of C now is related to X. So if we have in the function X, F of X minus C, and C here is a positive number, X minus C, that means the graph will go to the right C units. If we have X plus C, and remember C positive, so the graph will go to the left C units. Let's see an example here. F of X is absolute value of X minus four. You see now the four is related to X because it's inside the function. So X minus four, as we have seen in the formula, we shift the whole graph to the right. Now some students are confused. Is X minus four to the right or to the left? It is to the right by the formula X minus four, which is X minus C, C positive. So it is shifted to the right. You can also take four as a number X here, put X is equal to four, you get Y zero. See four zero on the graph. Just simple reason why it is shifted to the right. X minus five, all squared. This is a parabola shifted to the right also, five units. See the whole parabola. Then you can find this is X intercept. You can find Y intercept somewhere up. Now on the left, when you have, let's say absolute value X plus six, See x plus six shifted to the left six units. That's a V, V shape, because absolute value is a V shape. We have seen this in the basic functions, shifted to the left six units. Now we have a nice function here, square root of x plus seven. We know the square root starts from zero, half a parabola. X plus seven shifted to the left, according to the formula, 
If you put here x minus seven, it will give you zero. So the graph will start from this point, minus seven. Now you can find the domain, minus seven close to infinity. The range will be zero to infinity, y-intercept, x-intercept, etc. Find x-intercept, y-intercept, <coughs> and let's graph these two functions. We need also to find the domain and range. Now we have, look here, very nice question here. f of x is equal to square root of x minus three, plus two outside. So you have to decide now, this is three related to x. So x minus three, shift it to the right, remember. And this is plus two outside, outside related to y, that's up. So we can see the graph Square root of x, we know it, basic function here. Shift it to the right, so you go from the one, two, three, here you go to three, and then you shift up two units there, you start from here, you start from the point three, two. So now here we can see the domain close three to infinity on the x, and the range will be close to, to infinity on the y. And for this special function, no x intercept, no y intercept, it all, lies in quadrant one. Let's see the second one, absolute value. That's a V, X plus four, minus five. X plus four is shifted to the left, remember. And minus five is outside, minus five related to Y, so this is shifting down. Then we can graph V, second one here. We graph a V, see the V at, at zero. Then we're shifting four units to the left, so we go minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. We stop here, minus four. Then we go down, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, we stop here. That's the V. Now we can find X intercept and you can find Y intercept. Oh, five X intercept is very nice here. X intercept, you let Y equal zero. Then absolute value of X plus four is equal to five. This is a case number one in the absolute value equation. So x will be 1 or minus 9. You see that one. Then we can find y-intercept. Domain or range numbers range closed from minus 5 until infinity. Now this is the shifting summary. I said very important. Really it's important. Shifting summary. If a graph is shifted, let's say 7 units up. So up, down, remember up and down related to y. Right, left related to x. So if the graph is shifted up, we take the y, remove the y, replace it by y minus seven, if this is seven units. Six units down, so that means y changed to y plus six, as we have seen in the examples. The graph is shifted to the right two units, so this is x will be replaced by, we replace it by x minus two. If it is to the left, let's say three units, it will be x plus three. Simple example here, then we see more. Shift the graph, f of x is equal x squared plus two x minus one. Seven units up and three units to the left. See, I have chosen the same numbers here so that you can understand better. Seven units up for this graph here and three units to the left. So seven units up, that means related to y. f of x is y, so I have to replace it by, instead of y, I put y minus seven, remember that. I told you before, you can take minus seven on the other side and becomes plus seven, that's correct. Now let's look at the x, three units to the left. We have here x squared and we have two x. Each one, we replace it by x plus three because the whole graph will be shifted to the left. So x plus three, x plus three. Then we have to expand all this. Please do it yourself you will find the function now, the new function is y, you can write also f of x if you want, y x squared is plus eight x plus 21. That's, that's the function shifted to another place, seven units up and three units to the left, this one here. Now let's take a nice example here. The graph y equals one minus x over x plus one shifted two units up and one unit to the right, find the new equation. Now this question is a multiple choice. A, B, C, D, E, M, C, Q. You can try it please, good idea. You can pause the video a little, you try it, and then you find which one is the correct answer.
But remember here, shifted two units up. So you have to change y to y minus two because you can take the minus on the other side becomes plus two and one unit to the right. So two units up, replace y, replace it by y minus two. And here on the right, one unit on the right, you see one unit on the right, so it'll be x minus one. So every y, this is y, one y here we have, y minus two. One minus the x, see this is x up, up and down here. So this up will be x minus one, also this one x minus one, because y, we have one unit to the right. Now it's just simplify now. Take two on the other side, uh, one minus x, and then this is uh, plus one, so that's two minus x. Here we have one x, add here, combine the LCD is x, until you get this one, x plus two over x, which is the answer uh, C, x plus two over x. Now reflecting, if we have a function here, the graph is there, f of x, if you multiply the whole function by a minus from outside minus f of x, you reflect the whole graph. You see the, 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 the red one here is the reflected <coughs> about x-axis. If you replace every x by minus, minus x in the function, you reflect the graph in the y-axis. So y equals f of x is this blue. If you put every x a minus x, the graph will be reflected. Remember the word here, reflected in the y axis. <clears throat> Let's see an example here. f of x is equal minus x squared. See, if we need to graph this, see this minus here is outside. I will explain it again, reflection here with examples. Minus g of x, so minus x squared. We know x squared is a parabola, so we have a minus outside. So it will be the whole graph reflected in the x axis, because the minus outside the function. Same thing here, minus absolute value of x. So that is the v. If you put the minus outside, it's reflected in the x. Okay, another one here, square root of minus x. See, this is a reflection in the y. See, instead of x, we put minus x. <clears throat> we know the square root of x is the half parabola here from the zero, and then it is reflected in the y, because every x now we have a minus x. Also the cube, we know the cube function, x cube. If you put minus x all cube, it will be reflected in the y axis. Let's take now <coughs> nice function where we have <coughs> reflection, sorry, and shifting together. Also, we need the domain and range after we graph it. You can also, this one please, maybe a good idea if you can try it yourself. We have minus square root of minus x plus four outside. We need x intercept, y intercept. Uh, graph it, number three, domain range, five things we need here. <clears throat> now, I put here all the graphs together. Remember, I put it here dotted lines. See, this is dots, just points, because we cannot draw all these solid lines. It will be one, two, three, four graphs. So this one, the f of x is square root of x. You see this one, dotted lines, half parabola. If you have a minus outside, then the whole graph is reflected in the x. Now we have a minus inside. From this thread, we will go to the blue. It's reflected in the y. And then plus four outside, this is shifting up. So we take this blue up four units. This is the graph here. Now you can find x-intercept and y-intercept before you graph it if you like. You can do that easily x-intercept, as you know, let y equal to zero. So x will be minus 16. You see, we cannot see it here. Some people will say there is no x-intercept. You see this trick here? I showed you the graph. If I make a big scale here, see the graph will go at the minus 16, it will cut. See, I showed you here until minus eight. You see minus eight, but it will cut 
the x-axis at minus 16. Now, y intercept put x equals zero, y will be four, that's for domain from minus infinity until zero closed range will be from minus infinity until four on the y axis. So we call this graphing by steps, but make sure you put all these dotted lines, not solid line, only the final graph, final graph, please, final graph, you make it solid line to show this is the final graph. Now let's take another nice question here about parabola. We have two functions here, A and B, two parts. One is normal and one is nice. F of X is equal X plus one squared minus four. That's easy, normal means easy. So this is a parabola, X plus one shifted to the left, remember, one unit and minus four outside shifted down. So we can just draw it easily. See, so we have a parabola, basic function is a parabola, shifted one unit to the left, so from zero go minus here, just to the left because x plus one, down here, one, two, three, four, minus four. We call this point vertex. We will see it later in the quadratic function, the vertex, that's point here, the vertex. Minus one, minus four. Now you can find x intercept, y intercept easily, domain or real numbers or range, from minus four or close to infinity. That's easy, normal function. Look at the second one, please. Same parabola, same numbers, same shifting, and then I put absolute value on the whole function. That's why it's nice. And the graph you will see nice. So what will happen here? This graph, let's look at A now. I will show you A here. See, this is the graph. See the graph, some parts, this graph here, this graph is above the x-axis. Some part, there's a part here. See this like a U. This part is below, below the x, which means y negative. See all these y's negative? If you put absolute value on the whole function, that means we need all the function values, the y values positive. So we can take the negative part here, and make it positive. Just imagine what will happen here. See, this is what will happen. Oh boy, look at this. This is the parabola. This is part A, that's the parabola. If you put an absolute value on the function, okay, that's F now. If you put an absolute value on the function, that means all the negative Y, remember the negative Y under the X, under the x-axis, it will be positive. So we make it up here. So the graph will be like this, and then up all above the x, or on the x. Now x-intercept, y-intercept is the same. y-intercept now is three, domain r, range closed from zero to infinity. You see, look at the functions here. This is function f, this is function k. This is a normal parabola, all complete. We call it complete parabola. The second one, k of x is absolute value. That means take from the parabola, from f of x. So you have to use f of x to find k. You can draw, actually, by the way, you can draw the graph inside easily, this one here, just complete parabola. Then where do you have negative y under the x? Make it positive because every number in the absolute value becomes positive. Even if it is negative, absolute value of minus seven is seven, absolute value of minus 10 is 10. Now this topic is to be continued in the algebra course lecture 32. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, you can subscribe and share it please with your friends. Just to remind you, this is lecture 31. It will be continued in lecture 32. Thank you again for listening. Bye.